Just a couple days ago, we were all talking about how amazing Gemini 3 Pro was at everything, even at programming. But three days ago, Anthropic said, this is what I'm about to drop. And they dropped Opus 4.5, which by far, ladies and gents, in the last three days I've been using it, is the best coding model I've ever had to use. There are some cons I will talk about at the very end. But my goodness, out of all the models that exist, this by far is the best one. So in this video, we're going to talk about the model, the pricing, how to best use it, the project I was using it with, and my personal experience. And I have some tips and tricks to share with you to make sure you get the best out of this model. So sit back, relax, let's get into it. Claude Opus 4.5. This launched November 24th. 2025 now when it comes to the benchmarks especially the ones that matter to us developers it is kicking but it is winning the only benchmarks i think it's losing on is graduate level reasoning visual reasoning and multilingual q a which you and i don't care for right because if you're watching this you're looking to build software you're either a developer or you're someone who uses ai tools to build software or you're both and in that case this stuff doesn't really matter to us but everything else the tool calling is by far in my opinion the best even though i enjoyed gemini 3 pro there were times i noticed it mess up with its tool calling Opus 4.5, in my humble opinion, seems to be the best. Now, in terms of pricing, it's $5 per million tokens in, $25 per million tokens out. In terms of comparison with the previous Opus 4.1, this is 66 percent cheaper than the Opus 4.1 model. Now, obviously, this isn't the cheapest model, but I will say this. This is a bang for your buck. This is the best ROI. Like you are getting a great model at a cheaper price compared to 4.1 because 4.1 was astronomically expensive. Most of you know the project I'm working on, Bird Terminal, which is what I call the trading terminal for the AI age or the Bloomberg for Gen Zs. And there were a couple issues I had with the chart page and even with the workflow system I had built. And I'm just going to show you the PR this is the one that opus cooked mind you these were three prompts right and you see this giant pr with all these file changes it got it all at once the reason why i'm saying three prompts there was a couple things i had to clear for it and this is what i like about opus 4.5 it's one of those models where if your prompt is clear and you give it the resources meaning i attached docs a couple of times like i gave it the specific docs that needed to ingest it did it expeditiously i hope that's a word expeditiously well and what i mean by my workflows is it's this feature basically you have this node style environment where you can drag a trigger right so in this case i have a time trigger and i can specify okay 9 45 a.m we'll make this reoccurring so every single day we can make this weekly we'll, i'll make this daily you're going to buy 10 shares of the coinbase stock right and all i do is save this workflow and that's it i even have a webhook one where you can trigger this via webhook so if i save this workflow and i click here this is the webhook i would fire to and this trade would trigger now i had built this feature out but there were some quirks and some kinks that i was just too lazy to figure out so i gave it to opus 4.5 and in one shot fixed it it worked and my day job at convex i've also been working on a stripe component something that a lot of people have been asking for and if you're not familiar with convex components they're basically blocks of code that work with convex projects that give you some sort of functionality for example let's say you wanted to build an ai agent you're probably going to scaffold the same code like the structure of the code is generally going to be the same so instead of writing the same thing again and again you have an ai agent component and we also have a polar one uh autumn one but a lot of people have been asking for stripe and i was working on that and i had already built the component out myself but i gave it to opus 4 or 5 to check for any edge cases i had missed for and opus caught four things that i had slipped and not only did it correct them but it wrote tests it built me an example app using the component and not even like the code was actually pretty good like there was minimal cleanup that i had to do by now, I hope you're convinced that Opus 4.5, if you haven't given it a shot, you might as well, because arguably, there is no one who could tell you that there is a model that's better than 4.5 right now. Now, there are some cons to this model or some shortfallings I've seen. Number one, it is sort of eager. If you guys remember, I don't know if it was Claude Sonnet 3.1 or one of the early models. Um, 
it was a very eager model. Like you ask it to fix one thing, it would go do front end changes, it would rewrite your database, and it was just a terrible experience. Now I'm not saying Opus 4.5 does that all the time, but I've noticed it has a tendency sometimes to go above and beyond. It feels like an excited junior developer wants to prove himself or herself to you. So there is that tendency with Opus 4.5. I've noticed it a couple of times, so just make sure you're not just accepting randomly that you actually review the code it generates. Now I've been using Opus 4.5 a lot on cursor actually mainly on cursor and one thing I've realized is when the context window reaches about 70% it starts to not get as good so if I were you the moment I, I see 70% context window reached on cursor or whatever tool you're using I would just open a new tab and start again Re realistically I would cut off at 50% because you don't want to dump too much context you don't want to pollute the context per se and another thing that I found extremely useful is if you give it the right documentation code snippets like we would do this with other models before but i am telling you every time i've given it documentation it's followed it to the t and this is even internal docs or docs that i've created or code snippets that i've written giving it has resulted in much better outputs so if you haven't already what are you doing check out this model it is exceptional it is amazing it is decently fast like it's not composer fast but it's decently fast and i've even seen people maybe combine different models if the price is too high what you can do is you can use it to plan and then use composer to write the code either way i'm 4.5 pilled this is the best model for coding i haven't used anything else the results are amazing and i hope you enjoyed this video. I want to do a video on how to use 4.5 when designing uh, your web apps because I will say the one weakness I did notice is it's not the best with design. Although, if you attach a screenshot of a site that you like and pass it um, in the prompt, it's actually pretty good at mimicking existing design systems. So, that's you know, a free tip I'll give you right there. You take a screenshot of a page that you like. Let's say you like the Anthropic page here. You like the colors and the font. I would pa I would take a screenshot of this, pass it into the in the into the chat, and say match the colors, the fonts, um, and change the global .css file. It actually crushes, right? So maybe I'll do another video talking about this. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.